Imagine having your homeland destroyed. That is the reality for an entire people who even to this day are living with the consequences of the world's nuclear arms race. In tonight's Prime Focus, we want to introduce you to America's forgotten nuclear migrants, many of whom who have settled in Hawaii. They've had to face discrimination, a lack of health care and education. But as Eva Pilgrim reports, this resilient community has persevered through so much and is building a better future for their children. Some bananas, bananas, limes, coffee, vitamin C, take vitamin C. Mm. I like. My family, they don't really like orange. This is come and look and walk away. <laughs> Inside this lush Hawaiian rainforest, the roots of a new home are extending deep into the land. I think my home is very beautiful. On the big island of Hawaii, surrounded by the barren lava flats of Mauna Loa, this Marshallese community grows from the strong foundations built by one man, Jonathan Jackson. Yeah! Here's my boy, Tata. His name is Tata. Okay, you go play. <laughs> Roughly three decades ago, he was the first of many to make the nearly 3,000 mile pilgrimage to Ocean View, Hawaii. When I come and find this land, two acres over here, there's nothing around here. It's like a new life. Eh? Jonathan is part of an overlooked migration of a people who face significant hurdles in Hawaii. We always tell them we are come from Marshall Island. Every time we remind them we are not people from here. They say, where? Where in Marshall Island? We don't see. I say, one day you will see. Despite this remote community having no running water, limited access to health care, and significant barriers to education, it is still better than what remains of Jonathan's home island. We are lucky for everything. Luck, not often a word associated with the catastrophic downfall of the Marshall Islands. We cry about that because it's like now I'm crying. It's not good. He cries remembering the tragic history of his homeland a dark chapter in American history. This was Operation Crossroads. These islands in the Pacific, Bikini, Bajalain, and Anuitok, were chosen because no populated areas would be put in danger that were to form the target. People like Jonathan's family did live on these tiny islands. HR is here. When the bomb erupted, the white powder on the water, they don't know what is that. But after that, everybody realized, oh, that's the poison. The B-17s begin their run through the dangerous mushroom cloud. His homeland of Inuitok and Marshall Islands, one of the places the U.S. tested thermonuclear bombs. The most terrible of all the weapons that man has ever built, the H-bomb, was detonated at Inuitok. years of tests, 67 nuclear bombs. After World War II, everybody is racing to build the biggest nuclear weapons. Let us hope that the time never comes when we must use it. People actually lived for thousands of years in Bikini and Anahuatak, which are part of the Marshall Islands. The immediate impact of the bomb, fallout fell over some of the Marshall Islands. When the winds shifted, it dusted them, they got burns. The women who were pregnant, immediately lost their kids. The kids were born deformed. Some of them had thyroid issues. Later on, ionizing radiation can cause cancer. There's cancers that are still evolving. Dr. Neil Palafox worked in the Marshall Islands for nine years. This is a group of folks that I was working with. He saw firsthand the catastrophic failures of the systems there. 
the U.S. coerced the people to move for the nuclear testing. This was their home. Oh, we need to move you because of nuclear. Get on this barge, and we'll move you right back. And of course, they don't. The land's contaminated. They're forced into a place where they can't fish, are given canned foods in an inadequate health system. You're off your land, so you can't even fend for yourself in many ways. It's not just selling their house and, okay, I'll compensate you here, I'll give you another house. They've lost their total ancestral ties to everything. And, you know, their community breaks down. In 1986, nearly 30 years after nuclear testing concluded, an international agreement was established between the U.S. and three Pacific Island sovereign states. The treaty was dubbed the Compacts of Free Association, or COFA. The U.S. would gain access to all land, sea, and airspace in this region, strengthening military facilities in the Pacific. In return, Micronesians would have access to migrating and legally living in the United States. This fueled a mass migration of thousands of Micronesians to U.S. soil, many landing in Hawaii. The most recent census data says that there are over 17,000 Kofa citizens living here in Hawaii. I think our number is higher than that. Three areas that our people migrated for seeking better quality education, seeking better employment. And the third one is medical help. On weekends like this in Hawaii, the Micronesian culture is celebrated. And today, the youth are at the center of attention. Fierce discrimination towards the Micronesian community runs rampant in Hawaii. Their very visible impact on Honolulu has led to some backlash against this growing Micronesian population. It can be hard, especially for us Micronesians, because we get treated a certain way, like if they knew we're from Micronesia. When they have to hear it on the news or in the community about how Micronesians are dirty, they are, they should go back to their country. It pains me, why? What did we do? What did our kids do to, to deserve this? They are just the sweetest kids. They have dreams too. And I see them today. They are performing with so much courage, bravery, and talent. That's what I want people to see. That's what I want people to know about our Micronesian kids. This is the best of us. It's our commitment to people, and it's our American commitment to those that suffer the ill effects of nuclear testing and other challenges from the military operation we had in the Pacific but it creates one of the most complicated social and uh, strategic challenges that anyone's gonna ever see. About two dozen Micronesians gathered in the governor's ceremonial office the day before the state is shifting many of them to cheaper healthcare coverage. We're a small state with somewhat limited economic capacity, so we spend tens if not hundreds of millions of dollars supporting new communities that need education, that need healthcare, but we can only do so much. We didn't understand English, and my dad never went to school. A brand new home for an entire group of people who came hoping for a better life. We came here because my dad needed medical help. Lannon moved here in eighth grade and learned English through playing with his friends. I did not really understand English or able to speak English. One of the teachers that I really really um, appreciate. She greeted me in my language. Those kind of greeting kind of helped me know that, yes, I do belong here. I do feel welcome and I can learn. In Oahu, there were only two interpreters supporting a growing Marshallese population. Having us interpreters in school or even in the community is really important because without that assistant and that language access, students are not able to even start school. Families are not able to get a doctor's appointment or a medical insurance card or 
find a place to live is helping them survive. The first key of success is getting out of high school. Today, in the historically immigrant community of Waipahu, the Marshallese come together to celebrate a milestone not so common here in Hawaii. Hi. Graduation day. I just want to speak on behalf of all the graduates. I'm really grateful and thankful that you guys showed up. Roughly half of all Micronesians graduate high school, compared to the state average of 86 percent. Hard work and perseverance will help you push through. I saw a lot of Marshall students graduated was like, this is a lot. Like, this is improving. One graduate after another, each inspiring the next generation to dream bigger in America. Imagine living through all this, the nuclear testing, the home being destroyed. They are resilient, very resourceful people. So they built their own community. Back on the Big Island, the fruits of Jonathan's labor are taking shape yeah. as year after year, his community's roots grow stronger in their new home. I always thinking about Marshall Island, but I feel like uh, everybody come over here, I feel like home. Shoot it. One day, I will take them to Marshall Island and show them, here is your land, home. Yes. Resilience on display. Our thanks to Eva Pilgrim for that. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.